about five minutes and right at 10 o'clock. Perfect timing to go and like and share.
Thanks for gathering with us and joining us for worship this morning. Today, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. And his disciples, he kind of dismissed them. In fact, in the Greek, it said he compelled them to go. And they got in this boat. And they went to the other side to wait for Jesus. And in the meantime, there was a storm. And then the storm started shaking the boat and it moved it off the land and the wind was howling and the thunder coming and the disciples were afraid. And in the midst of their fear, when they thought they might not make it just in the right time, Jesus showed up. And Peter called out to him. He said, Jesus, is it you? If it's you, let me walk on this water. Peter starts walking, but the storm and the waves scare him. He calls out to Jesus. And Jesus takes his hand as he's sinking. And he gets in the boat with the disciples and calms the storm. And immediately when Jesus was there with them again, they were okay. The disciples said, truly, this is the Son of God. So this morning, whatever kind of week you've had, whether ever storms you've been going through, we gather to give God thanks. In the midst of the storm, Jesus reaches his hand out to us. Hear these words from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek him always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he's pronounced. O descendants of Abraham, his servants. O sons of Jacob, his chosen one. I invite you to join us as we sing together this song, Give Thanks. And in the comments, I put a, a little Google sheet up that has our that has our words and scripture on it for today. You can find that on our website, or if you click the link in the comments.
we gather to give God thanks and praise, and we gather as a community. The Lord hears our prayers when we're together. The Lord hears our prayers, and we're not alone. So this morning we gather to pray, to pray for ourselves, to pray for one another, to pray for our world. If you have a specific prayer request, please leave it in the comments or feel free to email me or call me during this week so I can be lifting you up in prayer and the church can lift you up in prayer. Our God is a God of miracles, a God that heals. So let's just take a moment and center ourselves and breathe. Invite God's Holy Spirit to be with us in this time. Take some deep breaths. Fill up your lungs. Fill that air. Feel it in the depths of your stomach. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God breathed his breath into us and gave us life. The Holy Spirit is like a breath, a mighty rushing wind. So as you breathe, breathe in God's Spirit. And as you breathe out, breathe out the stress of the week. And as you breathe in, breathe in God's Holy Spirit. And as you breathe out, Breathe out all those distractions. As you breathe in, breathe in God's Holy Spirit. As you breathe out, breathe out the hate you feel towards a neighbor. as you breathe in, breathe in God's Holy Spirit. As you breathe out, breathe out the fears that you may have this morning. As you breathe in, breathe in God's Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Most Holy God, we come to you. We gather to give you praise for who you are. So as we meet from our homes this morning, or maybe from our cars, or the line on our, in Dunkin' Donuts as we're watching on our phone, wherever we are, meet us at this moment. Meet your church, your people. Revive us once again. Nourish us and center us. Pour out your love on us so that we can be the love of Jesus to a broken and hurting world. And God, we pray for our world this morning. So many people in a panic, living in fear. So many people hurting. So many people directly impacted by this COVID virus. So God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to breathe in our world. To breathe your love. 
to breathe your comfort, to breathe on your people so they know they are not alone, to breathe your healing power for those who are in pain. To breathe on our leaders, wisdom and guidance. To breathe on all of us so we turn from our ways and turn to you. Revive us again once more, O oh God. And for specific people who are struggling, for those in our homes, for our loved ones, God. Heal. Guide the hands of doctors and caregivers. Help us to be patient when it seems like we can't be calm anymore. Center and help us to be still. God, even in the midst of the storms of life, you reach out your hand and you say, come. You say, have faith. So give us the faith of your people. Help us to reach out in faith to you, to your call on our lives. Give us strength, O oh God. And so we pray this day the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to share a song with you this morning. This is by a guy named Rich Mullins, and it's called Hold Me Jesus.
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a trip outside. been taking a walk through the book of Matthew and I know we're it's a struggle that we're not together physically yet we're hoping middle of September we struggled with school and making decisions there Hammond schools are out for the semester sports are canceled Seems like a lot's going on. Different school systems are going back. Some are staying. Who knows what's what's happening. Life seems like there's it's just all over the place. Lots of storms. And we're wondering where's our foundation? Where's our leadership? Yet we're reminded again today that our help does not come from man. Our help does not come from government. Our help comes from God. And in the middle of life's storm, Jesus held his hand out and was with those in fear. So let's look at our scripture this morning from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately he made his disciples get into a boat and go on to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But by the time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus said to them, take heart, it's I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered them, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But then he noticed a strong wind. He became frightened, and beginning to sink, he reached out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. May the Holy Spirit be added to our words and understanding of God's word for us in our day. Amen. As I said, we've been reading through the Gospel of Matthew and looking at these specifically the last couple of weeks, these miracle stories of Jesus and how he interacts with the crowds and the disciples. And often when we, when we talk about these miracles, last week we talked about the feeding of the 5,000. Today it's walking on water. In between there's a whole bunch of physical healings and the crowds just kind of keep coming and pouring in. When we look at these miracle stories, we think, how does this happen? How does God actually do these miracles? Is the story really right? I mean, if God did those miracles today, yesterday, or back in those days walking on water, what would happen today? Where is my walking on water experience? 
And I challenge us as we look at these, these scriptures in the Gospel of Matthew, that we, we begin to look beyond the how and the, physical, the physicality of the experience and what the Holy Spirit in, did through Jesus. But begin to look at the why. Why is this story in Matthew, why does Jesus do what he does in this gospel? Why does Jesus respond to the people the way he does? And so we're beginning, instead of the hows, to focus on the whys. And in our journey here, we started looking at Matthew in the parables where Jesus was talking about dirt. What does it mean to be in good soil? What does it mean to have a good foundation to be planted in good soil? And we looked at this through the lens of the Apostle Paul, these fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kind heartedness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, these outward signs, these blossoms, this fruit of what it means to lay our life in a good foundation, a good soil, a good foundation of love, a good foundation of Christ. And then we saw these crowds following Jesus as he was teaching. And they, they wanted more. They wanted to be healed. They wanted to be nourished. And last week, Jesus is sitting in a big group, 5,000 men, plus women and children. And he's teaching and they're hungry. And the disciples say, go away. Jesus is already tired. His cousin, John the Baptist, had just died. John was pretty popular, and the crowds were probably grieving as well. But Jesus pressed on and pressed on, and they were getting hungry. And so he told the disciples to give them something to eat. And of course, always the disciples questioning, thinking there wasn't enough, living this idea out of scarcity. They only had five loaves of bread, two little fish. But yet when all was said and done, there were over 12 baskets left over. Once Jesus blessed it, once Jesus became part of it, once the love of Christ was shown to that crowd, there was more than enough. And so after this huge experience, this huge crowd, Jesus is still tired. He still longs to reconnect with God, to have that alone time where the Spirit breathes on him. And we see this in uh, all over, especially in Matthew. Jesus goes to a mountain. And first he, he compels the disciples the scripture says in Greek. Or in our version, he dismisses the disciples to go on a boat and the crowds go away after the dinner. The disciples go on this boat. They're going to meet Jesus on the other side of the lake and Jesus goes up to this mountain. And we know when the Gospel of Matthew talks about going up to a mountain that we should pay attention and it's a big God moment. For instance, when Jesus went up to the mountain and was transfigured, he saw Elijah and Moses. That was a mountaintop experience. Jesus' teachings in Matthew, the sermon, what, on the mount. And here again, Jesus longs for that mountain experience, that long longing to reconnect he and God. He needs some time. We don't know what happened on that mountain, but... We know he just lost his cousin, John the Baptizer. We know that Jesus had been constantly in crowds healing and teaching. We know that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were already questioning and after him. And so Jesus sends the disciples away and goes to a mountain. 
And while all this is going on, a, a storm brews up, and the winds are coming, and that little boat that the disciples were in was tossed and turned and moves away from shore. And it's dark, and it's night, and the disciples are yet alone. And again, they don't have Jesus, and they're in fear, and they're panicking. And Matthew 14 says it was about dawn. And as the disciples are panicking, they see what they think is a ghost on the water walking. Can you picture that? And as they see this ghost, they call out in fear. But immediately, Jesus says, do not be afraid. And Peter's like, if it's you, God, if it's you, Lord, call me to come to you. I want to walk on water, too. And Jesus says, come. Peter angstily gets out of the boat, maybe nervously, and begins to walk on water, and he listens to the sound of Jesus' voice. He's doing it, walking on water just like Jesus was. Remember, we don't know those how moments, but those whys. Whatever it was, when Jesus called, Peter responded. And yet the wind was still there, and the storm was still going on, and it was still dark. And Peter was afraid and began to sink. And Jesus holds out his hand. He says, do not be afraid. And I think maybe just like that song, Peter might have cried out, hold me, Jesus. Hold me. He cries out, save me. Jesus, as he catches him, he says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You got to walk on water. Why were you doubting? Together, they get in the boat. And the wind dies down. And the disciples can finally breathe. And Peter says, truly, you are the Son of God. Another miracle in and of itself. Jesus walking on water and then Peter has enough faith that he gets a few steps out before he sees what's going on. Before he loses his faith. Before he gets scared. And a lot of us have heard this story before. It's pretty familiar. In fact, there's been books written on it. Uh, walking on water is one of the images we think when we think of Jesus, there's been self-help. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. Have faith. Why did Peter have to doubt? He could have kept walking on water. Just keep walking. Some interpretations, though. But just think about it. Imagine, imagine just for a moment if, if you could just walk on water what that experience would have been like, even just a few steps, as Jesus has called. And I wonder if, rather than Jesus rebuking Peter and saying, why do you doubt? Jesus more saying to Peter, why did you, this need to be proved to you? Why did you need to walk on water? I was right there. I'm right with you the whole time in the midst of the storm, even when you don't think I am. I wonder, the, the, the Gospel of Matthew was written 60 to 80 years after the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so when we look at these stories, we see them as a resurrected people. We see them through the lens of not Jesus on the cross, or not the lens of what's going on here. 
but the lens of we've already had this experience with Jesus, we've already seen the miracles and the life transformation that he's done. And here we are 60 to 80 years later and they're sharing this story of Jesus walking on water. And I wonder if the writer of Matthew might have been saying similar to as Paul did to those early churches. That even in the midst of life's storms, even when Jesus' physical presence isn't with us, that he holds us, that he calms us in the midst of a storm, that his hand is upon us. If we just had a little faith, if we just had enough faith to keep going, if we just had enough faith not to be blinded by storms and wind and boats and lakes and being scared, but enough to focus, enough faith to see that God is for us, that God is with us, that Christ never leaves us alone, even in the midst of a storm. And so I guess this morning, the message again is simple. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the storms all over. It doesn't take an expert in education to see that we're not quite up to bat with where we need to be with our kids. It doesn't take a sociologist to see that the world isn't quite right right now. It doesn't take a political scientist to say maybe there's something wrong with the way our government is running. But when we begin to look through the lens of Jesus and see the world through the lens of Jesus, he calls us to this faith. This faith beyond logic, this faith of miracles, this faith that together we can walk on water and he holds us and it's not about the storm and it's not about the winds and we need to stop having fear we know better because Jesus is with us. Friends, whatever storm you're going through today, whatever storm you see in the world, wherever the waves of life are crashing against you, know that Jesus reaches out his hand to you, to me, to each one of us, and he says, come. Take a step of faith. Let's be the calm in the storm together. Let's share this love, this life of transformation, this renewedness together. Let's walk together, even when it completely seems unrealistic. Let's walk together. And he says, I want to hold your hand, and I'm with you. And so together, may we be calmed May we surrender. May we come to Jesus. And as Peter said, truly, he is the Son of God. So this morning, if you're tired, come to Jesus. If you're worn out, come to Jesus. If you're having a hangover, come to Jesus. If you're tired of fighting with your family, come to Jesus. If you don't know where your next dollar is coming from, come to Jesus. If you have a yearning to reach out to your neighborhood and kids who need to know the love of Jesus, come to Jesus. If you haven't forgiven a friend or someone who has hurt you, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Have a little faith. Do not fear. Get out of the boat. And let's walk together. For Christ takes our hand 
He says we are never alone. Never alone. So my prayer for, for you, my prayer for me, my prayer for each one of us this morning, today and every day, may we be willing, even if we're in fear, to take Jesus' hand as he says, come. As he says, come. Come. The Apostle Paul I'm sorry. He says, come. So I'd like to pray for you this morning. And let's sing together. Will God take us from where we are? God, help us to see past these storms of life and all the chaos that life brings. But you're right there with us. And you don't leave us. And you're calling out to us. So God, take our hands. Guide us this week. Hold us this week. All your people. So that we can go out and we can share the love that we've experienced in our homes, in our schools, love the corners on the streets and around the world. That Jesus is Lord. Take us, Lord. Thank you for joining me this morning. This will be uploaded to YouTube soon, as well as Facebook. You can find the worship notes and a link on these sites or on our website, whitingchurch.org. Thank you for your continued commitment and generosity to Whiting Church and sharing the love of Jesus with the world. See you soon. If you need anything, get in touch. Go in peace and go with God. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn, through the storm, through the night, lead me on, to the light, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows tree, precious Lord, in your name. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. God goes with you.
Go in peace and go with God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next time.